Good morning. Welcome to Why in the Morning. You guys have been watching Tuesday Entrepreneurship and right now we're going to have our first interview for Tuesday Entrepreneurship. And remember that if you want to talk to us, you can do so on our social media handles which are just there on the bottom of the screen. And remember you have to put hashtag Why in the Morning and hashtag Tuesday Entrepreneurship and ask whatever you'd like to ask just in case you're interested in any information that we're going to be talking about today. And today actually I have a wonderful guest. She's an author right here from our wonderful Kenya. We celebrate our own authors like this. And uh, she's called Joyce Gikunju. I'd like for her to introduce some of the titles she may be holding, if any. And yeah, maybe where she's situated right now. And then we can start the interview. We can get to know her. So please, Karibuni, and join me in welcoming Joyce Gikunju. Thank you. Karibu, madam. Thank you. Yes. OK, and so um, I know that you're an author and also that you do your life coach. I am I'm a public speaking master masterclass coach. Pa yeah, <laughs> that's even better. <laughs> so you're teaching those ones. I am teaching business executives wow. how to position themselves for impact. Wow. Yes. How to position themselves for impact. Yes. Oh, oh okay. That's yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. And so there's a there's you know um, you find that there's a need for people to uh, mm. put themselves in the right place in order to get the stuff that should be coming to them. Correct. I see. Yeah. I see. Well, today we actually want to talk a little bit about books so that we can mm -hmm. get our people to read. And, um, you know, understanding Kenya and everything, uh, people tend to read very niche books. But before we even talk about the niche books that they tend to read, maybe we can talk about some of the things that you've been doing. So you've actually had 20 years of experience when it comes to a, wow, as a multi-award winning sales and marketing services. 20 years is a long time. 20 years is a really long time. Yeah. And so it looks like there's many fields in which you've decided to focus on. Okay. Well, um, maybe we can just start by talking about the books that are on the table today. And right now we have a book that, that's on the table. It's titled appropriately, um, Bouncing Back and Thriving. Bouncing Back and Thriving. I wonder what comes to mind when you guys hear that. But let's not jump to conclusions. We have the person who's written that right here on set with us. Let her tell us. Can you please tell us a little bit about what the book is without giving too many spoilers <laughs> so that people, when they're reading it, they're like, yeah, I knew that because she said. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So basically, um, Bouncing Back and Thriving is like the journey of business titans. Okay. The people you admire every day, the people you, who you see driving big cars, how did they get there? That's the story. I see. And the story is that they bounce back from failure, from setback, from insurmountable odds, and then they thrive. So in other words, who you see succeeding today failed until they succeeded. So that's mm -hmm. the story of the book. I see. Yeah. Okay. And I believe that um, for someone to write a book like this, that there must be something an experience that they've gone mm. through. I don't think that um, you can write about bouncing back and thriving when it comes to business or anything, unless you've had some experience in bouncing back and thriving. Could you kindly share with us if there's a background on it? Yes, there, there is a background on it. Um, although really the book is not about me, but yes, I, I have tried a business. I have tried an events marketing activations business. Okay. At some point it did well, and then at some point it failed. And I asked myself, who else is suffering uh, and who else has gone through the same thing like me? And how did they bounce back? Yes. Wow. So in my mind, I thought, let me go on a journey yes. to bounce back. But oh. I'm not going to do this alone. I am going to help the 400,000 plus people whose businesses apparently fail every year in Kenya. Is that right? Yes. Are those the numbers? Those are the numbers according to the Kenya National Bureau. 400,000 businesses 400, fail in Kenya per year. Plus Per year. Yes. So here I am on a quest and I say join me on the quest to find out how you can bounce back. Because Kenyans really are very, are, are very entrepreneurial lot. But what happens is that when they feel in business they don't try to bounce back. So here I am telling you yes you can. Here is a handbook. Here is a manual to bounce back. I see. Yeah. Okay, well, um, I think I'll be grabbing that manual because, um, um, yes, I don't think uh, there's, I think there's a lot of people more than we think who've dabbled yes. in starting some kind of business. And sometimes they don't share it, mm -hmm. and sometimes it didn't go according to plan, and it didn't go too well, and so maybe they had to close it down or it simply failed. Yes, and you know, the numbers we have are what is in the, is in the books. What about what we don't have in the books, in, in the statistics? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, because most people actually are ashamed of sharing such things. Thank you. And if you're kind of starting this business um, on or this journey by yourself, 
and you're telling people, I'm not going to tell anyone <laughs> until this business starts succeeding. Yes. But then the business fails. So which means you've not told anyone that not you started anyone. a business that failed. Like yeah. any, you sit down with a lot of stress and you just don't know what to do. Maybe that mojo and that morale and that <laughs> motivation to go forward is no longer there. Yeah. And that's what people can find in the book, I believe. Exactly. How on how to, mm -hmm. it's pattern. Yeah, so how do you bounce back? How do you get your, how do you get yours back? Yes. Yeah, okay, yes. that's what the book is about. And you know, the best thing about it is that the people who I have interviewed in the book are really people who are at the top of their game. Mm -hmm. So you're getting pure, you know, information, 100% mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. billionaires. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> who, who, I mean, wow. <laughs> wouldn't you want to get that? Because if you try to get through to their offices for inter for, for appointments, you may not get through. But here I am handing it to you. It is very difficult to have a sit down with a billionaire. And, yes. and many times we look at their lives and we're thinking to ourselves, or okay, there's those who tend to have the jealousy, maybe because they're small minded. But if you have a big mind and you've got plans, mm. you're looking at a billionaire and saying to yourself, how did he get there? Yeah. And how can I get the information that he has so I can get there? Mm. That's how you should think broadly. Yes. And I believe that, yeah, it's quite difficult. It's not like you can just be like, excuse me, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Even for me, getting them was hard. So yes. imagine what about you, what if yeah. you try? It's, mm -hmm. It'll even be much harder or never. I believe that. Yeah. yeah. So there's valuable information in here, and I think I might have to get that book. Um, but if we could just move on a little bit more, um, maybe we can discuss a little bit about Kenyans and mm. reading. Because right now, uh, someone may, read, may look at this and think, what is Bouncing Back and Thriving about? And sometimes the first thing you see people do when they're in a bookshop, they look at the title and they flip the book over to read the um, synopsis or the short form of what it's all about. And so they're like, okay, business, you know, like blah, blah, blah. blah. And maybe they were thinking it's got to do with something else. Maybe it's someone who got divorced that wants to bounce back and thrive. Maybe it's someone who got a miscarriage that wants mm. to bounce back and thrive. But then they find that the book is um, focused on a particular niche. And that's what I want to discuss right now because mm. Kenyans, we tend to go for what we want. Yes. And um, I don't, not very many people tend to read business books. It's mostly about something entertaining. Uh, a lot of our young people just read novels, which is just mm. basically a very long story. Um, <laughs> so there's that it lack of wanting information. Why do you think there's that lack of wanting valuable information and that more of um, wanting superficial fic fiction all the time? <laughs> That, that's, that's a scary thing, actually, when you think about it, because it means you just want to entertain yourself. You don't want to feed yes. your mind. Yes, that's so that's true. a dangerous place to be in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, since the beginning of time, it, it's very important, even for those who even don't read like our forefathers who didn't have books to read, but mm -hmm. they sought out wisdom. Mm -hmm. So it's a very dangerous place to be in if you are not seeking out wisdom, either by reading or by you know, seeking uh, information from the wise. And you know, these days for everyone who has something to say, it's in a book, it's in a newspaper, it's in written form. That's right. And why it is in written form is because our forefathers discovered, you know, that they passed down information by storytelling, but there's no record anyway. Imagine how much information we missed out on because yes. of that. So yeah. now these days there are even audio books for people who can't uh, read so that you can listen. Why? Because it is so important to remain mentally stimulated. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that's why people should read. People should read also because again, another thing that people don't know, reading is very good for stress reduce, mm -hmm. for, for stress reducing and also very good for uh, depression. So again, the things that we encounter every day in the news. So chances are, if you're feeling depressed and you're doing nothing about it, why don't you pick a book and read? If you find you're always un anxious or stressed, read a book, you'll be surprised. Mm. And another thing about books, optimism, it really builds your optimism. And in this country, we could really do with a lot of that. We could do with a lot of optimism, yes. optimism because yes. yeah, we have a lot of depressed souls. Nowadays, a lot of people committing suicide, you know. And yeah, it's good to get out of your space in a way. Mm -hmm. um, good to, how can I? Good to get out of your head. Yes, Nona. exactly. Because if you're always with your thoughts, your thoughts and your thoughts alone, mm. yeah, something might go wrong. Yeah. You need to look at someone else's perspective exactly. in life. Exactly. And, and once you can look mm -hmm. at that perspective in life, you stop thinking about yourself for maybe 30 minutes, one hour, mm -hmm. and you find that once you're done, you're looking at life in two different ways. 
And not only have you learned something, but your whole perspective on life has changed because you got out of your head for a second. You yes. said, let me stop thinking. <laughs> let me just pick up something that has to do nothing with my thoughts. Yeah. And so I think it's pretty great. And reading is very therapeutic, more than people actually know, more than mm -hmm. they'd like to give. And um, before we actually close the interview, before we move on to the next question, maybe you can tell people how they can find you, that we can continue and conclude later. Right, so on Facebook um, um, is Joyce Gikunju, Twitter is at Gikunju Joyce, and um, Instagram is Gikunju Joyce. Those are my social media handles. Okay, Gikunju Joyce, I hope you guys got that. And um, apart from writing and authorship, <coughs> what else do you tend to dabble in? Okay, uh, I wear so many hats. <laughs> oh, let's tell us about those hats. Maybe right. we can also wear them because <laughs> we're learning about entrepreneurs now. Yeah, so yeah. I'm like the go-to person for yeah. the millennial age. I get invited a lot to millennial conferences to talk about uh, the issues that millennials are dealing with, um, mostly about these dream killers. Uh -huh. Yes, these dream killers. And yeah. especially in this country, we could really do with a lot of um, millennial speakers to the millennial um, generation. Yeah. Um, especially because of, for example, what happened yesterday, you know. A job has been advertised, yes. just, you know, five positions, and there's, yeah, there's a situation where the thousands and thousands of people who turn up, that already shows there's a mindset issue in this country. That is why we need to, you what, know. What do you think it is, that mindset issue? Um, it's a mindset that is not of this day and age, where you believe in being employed as opposed to creating opportunities for yourself. It is an, an archaic way of thinking that Very your archaic. skills are yeah. much sought after by somebody that when you graduate, people can't wait to hire you. That is 1970s, you know, when the white settlers had left yes. and now there were jobs that needed to be taken up by the Africans during the Africanization period. Yes. Hello, we're in the year 2019. Everybody has skills. <laughs> Everybody has skills. Everybody has gone to university. Yes. So the question <laughs> what's is, what's special about you? What are you doing with what is in your hand? Yeah. You get. Yeah. So that is why I, I love you know being the go-to person for the millennial generation. You I know. See. Hmm. So that's what I do. And then another thing now for the business executives, CEOs, anybody who stands in front of a large audience, and is speaking in an area of their expertise. What I do is I teach a public speaking masterclass where we just sharpen how you present your, 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 yourself, how you engage your audience, and also for those who are making money, how to make sure you earn top dollar yeah. if you're talking to make money. So that's what I do when I'm not writing books. And I love it so much because I see the difference, you know, the before and after. Right. When someone comes to the class, they do a presentation. When they are right. done with the class, I can see the before and after. The whole difference a in presentation. Whole difference in presentation. Yeah. yeah, something sharp, something, you know, that even if you're called to, to the, the White House or to State House, it's something polished. Yes, yeah, I see. Wow, that's interesting. Mm. You have so many things I think I want in my life. Should I sign up for that class? Should yes, I buy you a book? Should. should I just enter your world and do every, <laughs> join Immerse everything yourself. that you're doing? There's a lot I can learn <laughs> from you. And mm. I love the fact that you're pushing forward the narrative that um, entrepreneurship is really important right now. Because like you said, um, times have changed. Um, man, I don't know when people are going to understand this. It's no longer the same. You cannot rely on employment. Even I can't rely on employment. I have to do something on the side. You understand? It's, it's not that reliable anymore. We're population now approaching 50 million. Yes. This 2019. 50M. I think mm. it was just last year we're at 40M. I don't mm -hmm. know what has happened. <laughs> but but <laughs> what I'm trying to say is po um, 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 opportunities when it comes to employment are quite low. And mm. creating opportunities, example being starting a business, yes. being an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. even if it means whatever skill you have, and it so happens that you're skillful in writing books, as well as um, teaching people when it comes to public speaking and presentation. Mm -hmm. And whatever skill it is that you have, it can be honed. And you can use that skill somehow to make some money or to, yeah. to open a business or become an entrepreneur. And that's mm -hmm. what we're trying to kind of push forward. And lastly, as we close, maybe we can try and let our readers, well, our readers and our people who are watching know, mm -hmm. who, who are interested in um, joining the writing world. Let's say that uh, they're watching Entrepreneurship mm -hmm. Tuesday today and they've decided that, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know, I have a lot of things have gone through maybe. 
or I have a lot of experiences in life and maybe I can put them down in a book. How can they go forward in doing it? Do you think it's something someone's born with? Is something something someone can go to school for? How can this person go forward in, in putting their life experiences down on paper? Um, that's a great question. And that is why I became a book coach. Okay. Because I talk to like so many people during networks and they all tell me, I have this idea, I have a book. So I call it hashtag manuscript stuck in your head. Ah. So how do I unstuck that manuscript? Mm. I always tell you, first of all, you need to print it. <laughs> when you print it, look for me. And then I take you through the, the journey from manuscript stuck in your head to published author. So I feel the need because there was so much, oh, I have this idea, I have this idea. So many people have so many manuscripts stuck in their head. Yes, so how do yeah. you unstuck it? Talk to me. Talk to you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you heard her. And she said you can find her at Gekunji Joyce, that's right? Yes. On every single platform. Yeah, and so that manuscript you have in your mind or whatever it is that you have running through your head, um, but not just random things. Make sure it's something that has some kind of content because mm. people also want to read uh, good content. So make sure that whatever experience it is that you have, if you feel like it's going to help someone out or if you have some bouncing back Mm -hmm. um, experiences, whatever it is, just kind of reach out to Gekunji Joyce on every social media handle and yeah, she'll help you out on that particular avenue. Um, this interview has to be particularly short because we have to go on to the next one. And I have been really honored to have you on set today, madam. Thank you, And Joy. I do hope that you can come. <laughs> when you have your next book out, I want yes. you here to tell us about it. And I also want you um, kind of just say, yeah, thanks. Thanks for making the time. Thanks, thanks for making the time. Thank you. Yes, yeah. yeah. My name is Joy Muchacha once again. You have been watching Tuesday Entrepreneurship with Joyce Kikunju. Why in the morning? Do stay tuned in. And Barry Moses is coming in next with, ne uh, with, the, new with the next interview. Pardon me. Asante sana. Yeah. <laughs> That was nice.